This is why I say that like watching YouTubers and Twitch streamers, even people like me, fine, I'll, yeah, I'll bite the bone on that. Um, you can't trust us as news because you're not getting news or reporting from an individual. You're getting their digested version of the facts, right? all of our hearts. But I've got some interesting things to share with you, some vital ideas I think you might find troubling. They are connected, of course, to weapon sales and structuring debt within Ukraine in ways that might diminish the possibility of democracy going forward, depending on what your definition of democracy is. Ukraine owes billions of dollars in foreign debt, most of it to international finance institutions, banks and hedge funds. If Western governments were serious about helping Ukrainians amid a devastating war, they would push for those debts to be cancelled. That's an interesting idea. Okay, just as a heads up, guys, I will say this with confidence. Uh, maybe I'll trigger something in the chat. Don't Jacobin is on the same level as like Breitbart or OAN or whatever. There is almost nothing of value from this publication. Um, it's the left wing equivalent of I don't I don't even want to say Fox News because I think Fox News is really far above. It's crazy that is to say places like um, like what is the Breitbart equivalent these days? Even the Daily Wire isn't that fucked. I'm trying to think of like what the mainstream like fucked like super fucked right wing publications are. But Jacobin is like utter trash. You don't you don't need to read anything. Um, yeah, New York Post maybe is like the equivalent of like uh, Jacobin or or Russia Today or something. Yeah, it's uh, pronounced Jacobin. Okay, Jacobin. Yeah, it's just total trash. But yeah, what was the first thing you saw on Jacobin that made you read them? I don't remember, but I've been referenced like articles over and over and over again um, over I think economic stuff, over foreign policy stuff. Like it's just all it's just a huge left wing like trash shit. Yeah were serious about helping Ukrainians amid a devastating war, they would push for those debts to be cancelled. That's an interesting idea, isn't it? Like, I don't think it makes you a conspiracy theorist or pro-Russia or pro-Putin, neither of which I am, unless we're using your definition of conspiracy theorists, you know, what's the difference between a conspiracy theory and the truth about six months? That one I'll go with. But what I feel is important here is what type of stand with Ukraine are we advocating for? Surely it should mean ubiquitously and as sincerely as possible in good faith, standing up for the rights of Ukrainian people and seeking a peaceful resolution to the conflict that's currently ongoing. There's no doubt that canceling their debt would be helpful, but that's not a conversation that will be advanced because who would that be? Oh, we did that on stream too, didn't we? Reading the articles about MLK. Did it have to do with the... Um... Did Jacobin make an article about how MLK actually supported violent riots or whatever? And they took little quotes from different speeches. And when we went back and we looked at the whole speeches, I, I, I'm remembering this more now. MLK did not support violent riots at any point in his life. He didn't. That is absolutely not the case. Some white people really love the concept of like the black animal rioting against the white man. I don't know why. We ran into a lot of that during my Omaha shit. And what Dr. Martin Luther King said about riots in the same letter um, which I'm sure I'm just like repeating something you've already heard, which is that, you know, the quote about riots being the, the language, language of the unheard, or the, yeah. the unheard. So like what that means to me is that a riot is not anything like a protest. A riot is, it's something that's a part of our emotional evolution as animals, as like primates. And when it happens, we undergo a mob mentality and there, there ceases to be any logic associated with the actions of the mob. And so what- For the Dr. record, Kim, I don't know if I'm comfortable comparing BLM writers with animals. I think that we can I have a little bit more- I understand that that could be a little uncomfortable, but I'm comparing all human being, we are animals as human beings. Uh, but that's, I'm just trying to explain that it's like in a, when, a, when a riot occurs, it's not like a, hey, let's riot now and burn down that Starbucks. It's a, I just saw a police officer kneel on someone's neck who looks like me, and I'm uncontrollably furious about it. So when we say things like, I don't think that rioters should do X, or I don't think that this is appropriate behavior from rioters, we're fundamentally misunderstanding what a riot is, and we're sort of like, we're... Ch like I, I'm again. I'm not trying to call black people or Black Lives Matter wild animals. We're, a riot is something that like transcends normal behavior, and we need to step back and take an understanding of that when we sort of start to critique rioters. And so, what I want to ask from you is like, does that does that at least make sense on some level? Like, we're not saying like yeah. it's okay to destroy stuff. We're saying I understand that of course are destroying stuff because the material conditions have like put so many people across the country into a riotous mindset. They are so oppressed by violence when they go out and try to protest peacefully uh, that they like are put into situations 
where it, like the rioting situation becomes inevitable because the police are like attacking you in the street, you know? And so like, we, you know, we've all seen the videos of like the civil rights movement of like people being gunned down with fire hoses and like attacked by dogs. And like, you know, at a certain point we have to stop being like, I care, like I'm concerned about the property and we have to be like, what are the things that are leading to this? And so I just want to ask you like what you think about all of that, because I think like, I'm not, I'm not like mad at you for saying like, Oh, writers shouldn't do. I think like, we just need to talk about this more, you know, to be clear. Let me be, yeah, wait, let me, let me be, yeah, let me be razor clear. I don't think we need to quote unquote talk about it. Like I think that actual material change needs to happen. Um, very clearly, uh, you know, rioters are doing what they're doing because of, I imagine, because of a sense of, uh, of a failure for, I guess, further in that Martin Luther King speech that promises of freedom and justice had not yet been met for that community. Um, I understand that there are conditions by which riots are created, but we can acknowledge that and simultaneously condemn rioting as well. Like, there are a lot of poor conditions that lead people to do bad things like we can condemn the poor conditions and we can condemn the bad things. Um, we don't have to approve of one just because it was created by something else, especially when those very same riots, you know, might lead us down roads that end up making the material conditions for people worse. You know, there's been some poli sci research, David Shore cites that, you know, speaking of MLK, that MLK's death and the resulting riots and the depression and turnout uh, supporting um, the, the depression and turnout as a result of his death, like could have literally led to Nixon's election. And there's an argument to be made for that. And, you know, when we are in a political climate where Trump is like losing in every conceivable level and the only thing he has to hold on to are riots, that's something that concerns me. Um, that's my only issue. But like, obviously, I mean, the conditions that create riots are horrible. We should condemn those conditions and we should fix those conditions. I don't think that's a controversial statement. And I've said as much for the past like five years, I've been talking about political things. Cool. Cool. Um, I'm, uh, I like, I accept that answer. Uh, can you tell me I am, a, I'm a communist, but that is not true. MLK was super against all forms of violent rioting. Um, the more we read about that, the more obvious that was the case. Um, he even talked about, I believe it was MLK even talked about how like before protests, they would literally go up and down lines of people like, give me anything you have, no fucking weapons, check your shit, nobody's carrying anything fucked up, like collecting stuff from the, from the audience and stuff, the audience, the protesters, um, super against violent rioting at all points in his life. Um, there's like one quote of his, like um, riots are the language of the unheard or whatever, where he basically talks about, um, I don't remember which speech this was. It's a, it's, a, it's a good point though. It's the idea that like, you shouldn't just openly condemn rioting without being aware of the conditions that cause rioting to happen, which is a fair point, right? It's stupid to just say like, oh, why are you mad? Why are you mad? Why are you mad? Well, why are they mad? Why don't you fucking figure it out, right? Which was a good point. But people will use this quote to say, look, riots are the language of the unheard. He wants us to riot, which is not true, yeah. You wrote about that on your positions page? Yeah, oh, I might have. That might have been when I was, uh, oh, fuck me. Yeah, Jacobin is garbage, okay. If it, I'm Did I write about this? Maybe, yeah. Oh yeah, cause I, cause their thing was like so fucking horrible on this that I, yeah. I should go back to writing stuff down there. God, fuck, I hate Vice. Just the op-ed losers, just the Hassan dick suckers, fuck. Okay. Who would that disadvantage? As bombing and shelling ripped through Ukraine's towns and cities in the first week of the invasion, the Ukrainian government still made a scheduled interest payment to its private lenders on time. That's unbelievable, wouldn't it? During the middle of it, oh, stand with Ukraine, get your flags on, get your badges on, everyone, roll up, roll up, stand with Ukraine, boo, boo it. Oh, Ukraine, where's your fucking money? Oh, sorry, here we go. Oh, Jesus Christ, he's a hero, that's a lens scanning. Is that enough? Here is the check. Right, yeah, stand with Ukraine again. It's okay, stand there, pay their debts. Back up, everyone, back on your feet. The lenders. I used to love watching Vice go to North Korean stuff. No, sorry, hold on. Let me. Chill, chilling it. Vice does a lot of really good work. Um, just a couple of the writers on their like editorial section are huge Hassan Dick writers. The majority of like Vice's reporting and everything, I think is still pretty good. I rate them based on what I've seen and can remember of them. I rate Vice significantly higher than um, than like Vox, for instance. Um, I don't think I've seen like a Vice video that's like super fucked ever though. I don't think I have. Um, just uh, there are a couple of writers on that site that are huge Hassan fanboys and they shit on me whenever they write about it. It's just fucking annoying. Yeah, that Jita Jackson is one. There's another guy. Um, yeah. There's mostly international finance institutions, banks and hedge funds are all queuing up to collect their debts with no sign of respite. respite. Now that's an existing capitalist economic model which you can either agree with or critique or be cynical and skeptical about. Why do you name Al Jazeera when asked about good sources? Um, I think reading foreign publications can be good sometimes. Al Jazeera does like a lot of okay stuff. Um, I. I <laughs> 
Am I wrong on this? I feel like Al Jazeera, I don't engage with them much, but I feel like Al Jazeera is just like a reporting outlet that would be like the roughly equivalent version of like CNN, and MSNBC or whatever. Like they write shit, unless I'm missing like some huge shit. But usually when I've read Al Jazeera articles on stuff, it's like, it's usually okay. Um, I know they have like a scary name, <laughs> like Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera. Oh my God, are they gonna Jane, buy? But, um, it's a generational I think that, like, opportunity. Um, 50 X your money in five years. Yeah. Just my opinion, not financial advice law. Um, yeah, I think Al Jazeera is like, uh, like decent, like BBC, like when you can read foreign publications on stuff, sometimes it's just- Thanks for getting me on the oatmeal train. I eat 600 cows of oats in the morning, burn it off, then eat my second meal at night. Obama, Obama, Biden. A lot of progressives consider The Economist to be a conservative publication. What are your thoughts on them? Um, the progressives think that anything that is like not the most left-wing thing in the world is like a horrible publication. There are a couple of like, center right or centrist publications that I think are, are pretty good. The Like the Wall Street Journal, I think is generally pretty good when it comes to financial stuff. Um, the Economist, I don't think I've engaged with as much. I don't know if I've read as many articles by The Economist, but like, I know the Wall Street Journal is pretty decent. I don't know if anybody shits on the Financial Times. That, that reporting is a little bit more in depth, a little bit less accessible to most people, I think. But the Financial Times, I've never heard bad things about. I've never read anything bad from them. Um, The biggest problem is the fact that Al Jazeera is funded by the Saudis, which sometimes encourages bias. How did, um, I guess the real question that would be, how did Al Jazeera cover the, um, oh God, I never remember the guy's name. Um, who was the guy that the Saudis, like, they chainsawed his body up to, like, take him out in bags from the embassy or whatever? Khashoggi, that guy? How did they, um, <laughs> how did they cover that? What do you think of the Associated Press? The um, AP and Reuters are obviously the gold standard for like on the ground reporting generally. Al Jazeera is funded by Qatar, not the Saudis. I don't know how like aligned the Saudis and the Qatari like interests are. I, 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 they seem similar to me, but I could be totally wrong. I don't know. <clears throat> they are enemies. Enemies how? I know of like the Gulf states but I don't know the intra relationships to the Gulf states. I don't know how they all get along with each other. I have no idea. Other than the fact that I think they fight with each other over who's producing oil sometimes, but. Saudi Arabia literally banned Al Jazeera. They are not friends. Okay. But what is important here is it's not being interrupted by what we're all told, and I believe is, a terrible crisis in Ukraine. If it really is a crisis, if utmost in all of our intentions is the well-being of Ukrainian people. Why is your health so low in Elden Ring? Cancel their debt. And if you can't do that, then at least acknowledge it's a bit of a priority, the situation in Ukraine, but the real priority is an economic one. So any solutions we suggest in Ukraine will have to be in line with our real priorities, which are profit. And if the government say, well, that's nothing to do with us, those are banks, hedge funds, and private interests, well, then we know who's really in power, don't we? The people of Ukraine are fighting for their survival while dealing with huge humanitarian needs, mass displacement, and the horrific siege conditions in Mariupol. And yet they are seeing urgently needed resources flow out of the country to foreign creditors. Urgently needed resources are flowing out of the country to- I, the, one of the big things, here are a couple things you should always ask. I don't know how to like make you aware of this, but whenever people use numbers like this, always think about this in terms of percentage. Um, even a number isn't enough. So when somebody says something like, oh, like Ukraine is paying huge amounts of money to like foreign debtors, like really huge amounts? Like, well, how much? They paid $10 million last year. Okay, well, $10 million, of, what does that represent of like their GDP or like their national like budget, like their, their year to year budget? Like, is it actually like that much money based on like how they spend on everything? Is it really that much? Like, I, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm always interested in that. Whenever somebody says something like, this company spent $5 million on this shit. Okay, well, five million out of what? Is that even that much? Is that more than normal? Is it less than normal? Is it like, you always like more context otherwise people are always trying to sell you bullshit um it, when they don't include figures like that you know the foreign creditors quick we urgently need these resources what because of the war and that and the rubble and all the children and everyone get blown up uh actually no it's these hedge funds and private initiatives oh yeah no, that is quite urgent while biden's talking about lethal aid coming to ukraine money's flowing out of ukraine to pay off private finance debts which are like here's a question do we think that more aid and free shit is has flowed into Ukraine, then interest payments on private debt has, has flowed out of Ukraine? It seems to me the answer would be obviously yes. But who knows? But I don't think there, he's probably not gonna get into it here, right? 
probably related to resources, that are probably connected to companies and institutions that, broadly speaking, benefit from the conflict or from the resources. So, one th Also, here's just like a quick thing. Um, if any, like, a, a more macro perspective, if I might be wrong, somebody can always email me and correct me. People always say that, like, all these companies are invested uh, in, in causing the war. All of these companies want the war to happen. There are so many companies that profit off war. I'm pretty sure that overwhelmingly, the US economy, I don't think benefits from like wars. There might be like a couple of like private contractors that do, but I don't think the vast majority of the US economy likes that. And when it comes to like, who's gonna control the US economy to do shit, I feel like Walmart would hire secret assassins to knock off like fucking Boeing or Raytheon's, you know, execs before allowing them to tank the entire fucking company. Not that that would actually happen. But like, if we're living in some shadowy world where companies control the government, I feel like you would see perpetual like peace and trading and everything because like these people don't really want us to have all this international conflict that fucks our markets up so hard you know like i don't know that just seems if if companies like if private companies control so much like why did we go into so many coronavirus lockdowns and shit right that had a huge knockoff effect on like stocks everywhere too you know but I, but people probably say there's like secret ways of getting money or you know the top 10 billionaires enrich themselves more during whatever even though they don't represent the whole of the market or even the whole of ceos or even the whole of ceos of like fortune 500 companies but whatever uh, you could do is say, right, because this is a real crisis, and we're all agreed, right, that it's a crisis, and stand with Ukraine and the badges and the flags, super important, I'm on board with all of that stuff. And because I'm really on board, we're going to do anything that's necessary, starting with cancelling that. You can do that right now, like that. Not cancelling the debt is the revelation that there are submerged narratives that are dominating outcomes. Ukraine's total external government debt amounts to $54 billion. The country is set to pay $7.3 billion in debt repayments this year alone. Ukraine's total external government debt amounts to $54 billion. The country is set to pay $7.3 billion in debt repayments is this just to private lenders? I kind of wonder what this is. Okay, so the total external government debt amounts to fifty-four billion. The country has to pay. You also, ha well, you also kind of have to pay foreign debt as well, right? You can't default on debt as a country because you theoretically can print your own money too. Wouldn't that fuck you if you defaulted on debt as well? I hate Jacobin so much. More than half is due to private lenders like banks and hedge okay, funds. Okay, so half of this is private lenders like banks and hedge funds. While most of the rest is owed to multilateral institutions such as the IMF, the World Bank, and the European Investment Bank. While most of the rest is owed to multilateral institutions such as the International Money. How much, how much aid has US sent to Ukraine? I wonder if we can find numbers on this. So this is 800 million in security assistance. That was March 16th. On March 18th, we have, that was just security assistance. So we have $13.6 billion in US spending in Ukraine. Over what time frame? Congress approved $13.6 billion in emergency spending last week. Is this literally like a one time cash transfer? Food assistance of $2.65 billion. Migration refugee is it, This is so much money. Holy shit. Grants and loans of 650, grants for food donations, 100 million, economic support fund. <laughs> Foreign aid to Ukraine by year, Jesus. Okay, so I mean, like, I feel like this is probably worth bringing up in the conversation. Do you think ja the Jacobin article does? Due to private $54 billion, the country is set to pay some so they're paying off $7.3 billion in debt repayments. Only half of that is to private lenders, which I don't even know if that's bad. They have to pay their debt off. It's a country. You don't want to default on debt. It makes you look really bad and it fucks your shit up. Um, how is using an editorial as a source a reasonable thing? Isn't Russell being massively dishonest here? What proof does he have that those numbers are correct? Well, because he's just reading a Jacobin article and it feeds in the narrative that he wants and then he can use that to feed his audience the narrative they want. This is why I say that like watching YouTubers and Twitch streamers, and even people like me, fine, I'll, yeah, I'll bite the bottle on that. Um, you can't trust us as news because you're not getting news or reporting from an individual. You're getting their digested version of the facts, right? I guess he's arguing for debt forgiveness rather than a default. No, that's not what he's arguing for. He's not arguing that the debt should be forgiven. What he's arguing is that shady private companies are really the ones truly pulling the strings behind the scenes. That's what he's arguing for. That's what that's the argument that's being presented here. <clears throat> the Jacobin article might be um, arguing for 
foreign debt. But that's because keep in mind that Jacobin hates things like the uh, International Monetary Fund and shit. Like they view that as being like the horrible, evil, white colonizer, Western way of taking over countries and destroying them by giving them loans they can't afford, blah, 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 blah. Like. in debt repayments this year alone. More than half is due to private lenders like banks and hedge funds, while most of the rest is owned to multilateral institutions such as the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and the European Investment Bank. The current fall in the value of Ukrainian hryvnia against the US dollar will only exacerbate the debt burden as foreign debts are owed in dollars, heaping extra pressure on the government to find the funds to repay its loans at a time of foreign invasion and extreme economic disruption. Does the government have to find the funds to repay its loan, or can't they, do they not have like... Do they not do central banking like every other country in the world? Am I crazy? A government can't default on it. They're not part of any other, they're not part of the European Union or whatever, right? They have control of their currency now. When people talk about conspiracy theory, when people talk about this channel reporting information in an irresponsible way, or the word de la jure, misinformation, you decide for yourself, do you think that's important information? That during this crisis, during a time when, you know, we've put up a link for a Ukrainian charity before, people are doing incredible things. The loans need to be paid in dollars. Yeah, but you would trade out your hiringas, whatever the fuck it is. You would trade your currency on forex markets for dollars, and then you would do that, right? Yeah. Kids at schools are doing stuff. All this money's being raised. Help Ukraine, help Ukraine, which is the right thing to do, by the way. Which is the right thing to do, by the way. At the same time, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the European Investment Bank, as well as several private interests, are making a profit from Ukraine right now. Do you think that information is irrelevant? If you think that information is irrelevant, then that's cool. That's fine. I think it's relevant. I think it's important. I think it's valuable. I think we should know it. I think if we don't know that kind of information, we're unable to assess reality. Since the invasion, Ukrainian dollar denominated bonds, which were issued as part of its 2015 debt restructuring, have been trading at around 25 cents on the dollar. This reflects the high risk of default, but also means that if Ukraine continues to make its debt payments, Western banks and hedge funds could make profits of 300%. There you are. That means that if Ukraine continues to restructuring, have been trading at around 25 cents on the dollar. This reflects the high risk of... Extended specific items that central banks which four markets will be willing or able to take the currency for changing it over to dollars. The concern in this particular argument is that the central banks which forex might Oh, why wouldn't you? It's not like you can't it's not like Ukrainian dollars have become worthless, no? Bonds which were issued as part of its 2015 debt restructuring have been trading around 25 cents on the dollar. This reflects the high risk of default, but also means that if Ukraine continues to make its debt payments, Western banks and hedge funds could make profits of 300 percent There you are. So all the while we're talking about lethal aid, which means weapons, or humanitarian aid, which presumably means things that are more urgently required and which we would all sort of unthinkingly endorse. At the same time, 300% profit is being made by Western banks and hedge funds. Is that misinformation? Can you explain why it matters that Russia defaulted on their foreign debt? Um, Russia's in kind of a weird state right now where aren't they trying to cut themselves off from the Western world and have like their own little Eurasian alliance? I don't know who they defaulted. I don't know enough about the Russian economic situation or what their goal is. Or is that an uncomfortable truth, a difficult truth to deal with while your sentiment is being roused by the very real suffering of Ukrainian people? I wish the world was simpler sometimes. I wish it was. I wish that we could just go, look, there's bad is and there's good is, there's this bad conflict. Why don't we just help? Why don't we do things to raise money for Ukrainian people? Why don't we put up Ukrainian refugees? Like, to be able to sincerely do that, we're not in a position to be able to do that because we're continually lied to and misled. And when you try to tell the truth about these situations, that information is manipulated, condemned, and criticized. The response of multilateral institutions has been to give even more loans to Ukraine. <laughs> loans seems like you're in a lot of trouble yes we are we are really suffering you need help right please desperately okay we'll give you this money now on the next well, but there's also like a lot you're not telling the full story ah dude these people get so big like giving half truths and shit right there's also like a lot of non like contingent aid being sent as well right yeah some of it seemed like it was loans but like assuming unless i'm missing something and looking at this huge thing i see grants and loans were 650 million dollars out of the 6.9 billion dollars of traditional foreign aid like how much of this was th for the military supplies 3.5 billion was any of this alone it doesn't look like it deployments and intelligence programs doesn't look like it so it was just part of the 650 million here i don't know how much of his loans versus grants but like Years. We're going to want to see a 
about 300% of so what was that? I can't hear because of the bombs. Bloody Putin. Yeah, bloody Putin. Really evil. Over uh, the next few years, we're going to need to say about, sorry, I can't hear because of the bombs. 300%. You're saying this is mental help? Yeah, 300%. Just, uh, just sign the thing. We should just sign this. Since the war started, the IMF has given a 1.4 billion pound emergency loan, while the World Bank has provided a 723 million dollar financial package that includes 589 million dollars in loans. These new loans are being piled on top of Ukraine's already unsustainable debt. Any of you that are in debt, and I read the comments, so I know a lot of you are, that debt is a curse for individuals, for families. We live in this state of debt, in this state of usury that is difficult to sustain. Have to now recognise that it's part of a kind of global agenda. Debt does not create freedom. Debt creates the opposite. Debt does not engender democracy. Debt is a form of tyranny that truncates. Debt, you just don't understand what debt is. Oh, fuck me.